Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, Eleanor. We just had our morning snacks. Oh, wow, 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 wow. They woke me up at like 5.30 this morning. I told them, no, 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 no. And they did not listen to me. So they kept whining until they got them. Yeah, that's their MO. All right. So now that they've had them, they can let Daddy go back to sleep, right? Right? Look how handsome Buddy is in the background. <laughs> yeah, you're gorgeous too, honey. All right. I'm going back to sleep, you. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Look at that tail go. Yeah, I'm talking about you. They switched places. But his tail is going, so he's doing all right. Okay. We can all go to sleep now. <sighs> hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. Today is Vlogtober Day 21. I can't believe the month is passing so quickly. I also can't believe how gorgeous today is. It's probably... I don't know, 85, 87 degrees uh, here in Las Vegas. It was in the 60s at the uh, at Mount Charleston yesterday, so today feels very warm to me. Uh, but at the end of October, can you believe this weather? Oh my God. But um, I'm going to my pottery studio class. It's the independent class, which means there's no supervision and almost no one in the room. Last week on a Friday, there were two people there with me. So I'm not in a rush to get there. Uh, I'm not feeling very motivated either, but, but, since I'm actually early, which is very strange, I decided to stop by my favorite Goodwill. It's the one in South Maryland here in Las Vegas. Now, I have not been to this Goodwill in probably six weeks in that I haven't been shopping a lot for, for stuff for eBay because lately I found it almost impossible to find the motivation to list things, which is weird because I've sold so many things. It should motivate me, but it hasn't, whatever. But I decided to just pop in here on a whim. I didn't grab a cart because that would mean I would fill it with things I don't need. And so I walked by the furniture section on a whim because I found a couple fun pieces and I found something I have been looking for since I bought my house, literally like the day after my I got the keys, I started looking for something like this and I found it at Goodwill. And wait till you hear what I paid for it. Okay, it is, well, you really can't even see, can you? In the shadow here, this is the top section. There's a pillow that's on the roof of my car right now that fits right there. Uh, and this is the uh, top section of a sectional chaise lounge. And you can see how, like, you can see how big this, this thing is. It's gigantic and it's in perfect condition. It's uh, in a very neutral gray. It's soft, but still structured. Uh, and both pieces fit in my tiny car. And it was, get this, get this. It was $15. It was $15. Huh? All right. Yeah, thanks. I'll take it. Uh, now, it does require me moving absolutely everything in my uh, living room. <laughs> but um, the, the idea here is that while the cats are really going to enjoy it, Buddy in particular is going to enjoy it, um, but uh, it'll be somewhere where I can actually sit down, stretch my legs out, maybe take a nap, read a book, and relax. The chairs I have in my living room, I have two wing back chairs and I have these two leather um, brass metal chairs that are pretty cool. I don't think I need a sofa. It's just me with the cats. So I've been looking for a really great sectional chaise. And I find one at Goodwill, $15. So I'm gonna put it in the garage. Uh, I'm gonna brush it, but it doesn't really need any maintenance. I'm gonna put it in the garage and leave it there for like a week, week and a half. So if anything wants to come out of there, <laughs> I don't think it will because it looks like it's in good shape. Uh, but just in case, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm super excited. Yay! Now I'm going to go to my pottery class and uh, get some... I think I have some pots to glaze. Uh, but that's 
that's about it so far. So no, no other plan for the day, but I'll, I am, I find today a success already. So let me stop and let me get to my class. See you soon. All right, so I'm glazing this boy. Have bisque fired with some of that smoke glaze that should let some of this black show through. So that's what I'm doing today in the pottery class. Hey guys, all right, so you can see by the open space behind me that my uh, car is empty. I've dropped off the chaise lounge in my garage. It's airing out, doing its thing there. Um, I used to be a little squirm squeamish, I should say, about uh, buying anything upholstered for the house from Goodwill. But I've picked up two upholstered wing bag chairs and a couple accessory pillows. In fact, even the shirt I'm wearing right now, I got at Goodwill. Uh, and I have never had a problem with anything uh, in the house, you know, any living things in the house. Um, so I'm very pleased, very happy. Um, I am going into another Goodwill. I know, I know, I know, I know. Shh, I don't need anything at Goodwill. You're right. Uh, but if you watch the video from uh, the day before yesterday, where I sold an end table, I bought at this Goodwill on Tropicana for $300. I sold that end table for $300. Um, and, uh, but the problem is, before someone bought that table, it was sitting under one of my taller cat trees in the living room. Uh, Buddy, in particular, likes to be up really, really high. Uh, so I had in that end table tucked under that cat tree. Now, because I sold that table for $300, I need to find a replacement table. Uh, so this Goodwill here usually has some really good sturdy furniture, really inexpensive. So I'm going to pick up something here if they have something. Uh, and because the rest of the day is really unplanned, and I don't really plan on leaving the house very much, I do have a whole bunch of questions written down on a piece of paper here uh, that you guys have asked me over the week or so. So I'm going to do another partial Q&A video. Uh, and there's a couple really great questions here, like really awesome, awesome, awesome questions. So um, I'm going to pop in the store real quick, pop back out and I'll answer some good questions, maybe get an iced coffee or something and sit somewhere quiet and talk to you about my answers to these questions. All right, I will talk to you shortly. All right, so Buddy is gonna have to handle being eye level with me for a little bit longer. I could not find an end table that was sturdy enough or tall enough for my needs. I found a couple that were priced right, like $2.99, but they just weren't what I needed and didn't need to buy them, so that's great. Uh, I ain't, might be making a mistake <laughs> because I'm uh, a straight shot from Ikea. It's like whoosh, right down there. Um, and I'm kind of craving Ikea for dinner. Uh, and I love walking around to Ikea, so I might just hit Ikea and maybe take you along with me if you want. Uh, but I've got lots and lots of questions to ask while I'm driving there. Uh, two of the questions are from Daniel. One is, am I usually lead? And that means flight attendant A. Yes, I try to be at least. I'd say about 70, 75% of the time I fly lead. I like flying lead. And I'd like to say it's because I can set a good tone, that I really enjoy the position. I get to see everything firsthand. The reality is probably that I get attention. I love attention. For someone who tends to be really shy, you wouldn't believe it. But in person, I'm not really as outgoing as I am on camera. Some of my coworkers might disagree, but that's how I feel. Um, plus, um, I just, I like the attention. I like getting involved. Um, when I'm flying lead, I have a, a good excuse to start conversations and chat passengers up and I'm up in front with the flight deck and I just, I just really enjoy the position. So I, I try to fly lead. Uh, and, but I also know that I can set a positive tone. Even if I'm in a bad mood, I can set a positive tone. Um, and so there you go. The next question is probably one of the best questions and I'm sorry, I'm not looking at you. I'm driving. Um, one of the best questions I've received, like ever, in a quick Q and A. And this is also from my friend Daniel, who's a friend of mine. Uh, his wife Jen. They are a they are a darling little couple. But um, while I'm at a red light here, let's see. Do flight attendants agree disagree much on flights, and how is that handled? That's probably like the, the best question I've ever been asked 
on a Q&A kind of thing because it's such an important part of how we do our jobs and what we do. There's something called CRM, Crew Resource Management, uh, and that's where flood attendants definitely keep each other in the loop. If you feel that someone has uh, been overserved and seems intoxicated or they come on board uh, seemingly intoxicated, you have to say something. Um, if there's something going on in the cabin that just might not be kosher, you kind of bring it up with another coworker. That other coworker might not agree with your point of view or, or how you see things. So maybe they're right and you're kind of just reading into stuff from your personal experience. Or the two of you agree and say, hey, this is this is weird. Let's ask somebody else. That, you know, um, so you really, really, really want to be able to, at least, even if you don't like the coworker, and there are times you don't like your coworkers, even if you don't like each other, you really have to be able to communicate with each other and talk, you know, go back and forth. So when someone does something on board that I might disagree with, what would be something I disagree with? Someone I know uh, in my airline likes to board the aircraft and I should probably write a, write a report, but uh, they like to board the aircraft with the aircraft a little dim. They don't want the lights full bright where they're supposed to be on full bright. Now, I've only flown with this person once before. Uh, when, it, when it happened, um, when, when I saw this, I mentioned it to the person, the, they were flying lead. I mentioned it to them saying, you know, um, with a pleasant tone, uh, you know, it's supposed, everything's supposed to be on bright, right? He's like, yeah, it's just a little harsh. And I want to get everyone in the mindset of this red eye and so on and so on. So um, I disagreed with what I saw. I mentioned it to him in a positive note. I wasn't like, listen, listen, girl, you're doing the wrong thing. Um, listen, Linda. Um, and it's now up to me whether or not I want to push that or go further with that when writing a safety report, which technically I should. So I might, but hmm, I hate reports. Um, so that's how I would address it. If it were something like, gee, um, you just gave away a kid's snack pack without charging. Am I going to ask the, somebody like, wait, why'd you do that? Probably not. They might know that um, the kid was cranky, causing a scene, making everyone around the kid uh, upset and irritable on a red eye. So let's just give the kids some snacks and keep their hands and mouth busy. Uh, so, you know, I'm not going to disagree with that. So um, uh, the ideal way to approach something when you don't agree and there's tons of times you disagree with your coworkers, is to maybe politely try to practice smiling and saying, hey, you know, um, I noticed X, Y, Z, uh, and um, I, I thought it was the other way around. You know, what was your reasoning maybe? Or how can you, you know, try to approach it in a polite, mature sort of way. Um, there are times that doesn't happen, and what ends up being uh, is gossip like two or three of the crew will be standing in the back looking up front at the lead who's doing something wrong um, and uh, it just turns into gossip and um, that's not healthy so I hope that answered the question uh, let's see uh, who I don't know who asked this with my seniority is it easy to pick up trips I think that's Daniel again um, it's easier to pick up trips with my seniority um, I've been here for almost six years now, five and a half years, uh, and my seniority is really good in base compared to other airlines. Uh, so I would say if I'm trying to pick up a trip, I'd say 50-50. I get like a 50-50 chance if I want to pick something up. Um, if I don't get it, it's because someone who's been way senior to me. It's all, my number starts with a seven one. It's always like a six four uh, that gets the trip that I try to pick up. But that's just how it is in the industry. Um, let's see, Linda asked me, do I ever want to fly international trips? No, thank you. No, 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 thank you very much. I hate 
Flying International. Now, I would hate Flying International if it, I were with a, a legacy as much as I would with my airline. With my airline, our international trips are to like Costa Rica. They're gonna be, do we fly to Jamaica anymore? I don't even know. Um, Mexico, you know, all over South America. We fly as far south as Peru, uh, Lima. But um, I don't like flying international for our airline. Mostly because that just means going through customs, honestly. Paperwork, we never have the right paperwork. Like, we never have enough forms in English or Spanish. Um, and so that's always irritating. But I mostly hate going through customs. I hate having to think about my food uh, and how much, what can I take, what can't I take for this particular destination. Uh, oh, shoot. I, of course, this is when I packed a crudite and you know ham sandwiches this is just not good uh and some some airports when you're coming in on um, uh customs is just a, a horror show so i would avoid international trips at all cost with my airline i will end up taking a cancun turn once in a while because they're typically not that painful but for the most part no thank you. And if I did work for a legacy airline, I've watched enough flight attendants go to Europe, um, Edinburgh, London, Italy, Paris. I've seen plenty of those people work those flights internationally, be like murdered by those flights, and then have to somehow magically recoup during the layover and have enough energy to actually prepare for the return trip. No, 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 thank you. Just to go to Harrods and buy some souvenirs? No, I'm good, thanks. I can also say that I've, I lived in Europe as a teenager for four years, I was very young, but I, I really don't have a burning need to see Europe again, I just don't. I, I know that I sound, I don't know, ignorant or something, I've, I don't really crave Europe. Um, I wouldn't mind going back to Germany one day, to revisit where I used to live, um, ideally, but, so yeah, I don't really have any desire to do international trips. Not at all, thanks. Uh, let's see, let me wait for another red light before I get to another question so I can read my question here. Ta-da, I made it to Ikea. I took a wrong turn and then I got stuck behind a bus. So yeah, it took me a little bit longer than I thought it would, but I'm here, yay. Um, all right, so. Um, Hugo wrote that he received his CJO, uh, but he had a question. Congratulations on the CJO. That just means his conditional job offer if you're not a flight attendant. Um, and, uh, but he never asked the question. So Hugo, go in the comment section below, ask me your question. I will do my best to answer it. The next question is, uh, what kind of shoe can I recommend to male flight attendants? And man, oh man, I will tell you, the best shoe for me, this is the, the for me thing, uh, is by a company called Bostonian. I'm going to do my best to, when I get home, make a little video clip of the shoe because I still have, I have a couple pair in their boxes ready for when I need them. Um, I do have relatively flat-ish feet. Um, I wear a, uh, and it's, they're fairly wide, but not really that wide. So um, I'll show you that, uh, that shoe box when I get home. All right, so this is the shoe that I wear every single day to work as a flight attendant. It is by a company called Bostonian. It is the Lug Light Step. Uh, I wear a 12 medium. Uh, for some reason, in European sizes, I wear a 45, but in this shoe, it's labeled as a 46. What I like about it, it's waterproof. Uh, the toe box is a natural rounded. It's not too pointy. It's not squared off. It's a very modern, very classic uh, also shoe shape. Uh, the bottom is uh, pretty slip resistant. I've never had a problem with slipping. It's like that EVA foam. It's very, very dense, but very light. And it does not have a metal shank in the, in the shoe. So I don't have to take it off during when I go through TSA. It's got a little um, memory foam liner inside. 
And it's just a good looking shoe. It's a good looking shoe. It's got that little gusset right there. Uh, it's a loafer. So there's no having to uh, tie shoes, uh, which is, you know, I just want to slip my shoes on and go. They feel like slippers. I have one pair that I'm currently wearing. I have this as a backup pair. And I also have uh, way up here in a box. I have the same shoe in an ankle boot. Um, apparently it's the same shoe, but with a higher side. Uh, and I have those as a backup, backup, backup. You'll see those were listed at 69. The original price was 89. Um, here's my closet. Um, it's a little messy. Um, I think when I originally bought them at the Clark's outlet, they were buy one, get one. And, uh, so they were listed at 89. I bought one pair, got the other pair half price. So yeah, that's the shoe I wear. I will wear that shoe until I can no longer find it. Ta-da, there you go. All right, so I went into the as is section. There was nothing I was interested in. So let's see, um, Vivian is um, wants me to touch on a topic that is sometimes brought up at a customer service facing kind of job interview. It's not really a question, but it is at the same time. So it's, uh, it's uh, tell me about a time you've gone outside your standard procedure to accommodate a customer's request. So she's asked, how would I address that kind of thing? Because it, it stumped her. Well, there's like thousands of ways to, uh, to address that, all based on your personal experience. But one of the things that kind of came up in my mind, for example, is um, years ago, one of my last jobs actually working in Boston was working for an optometrist uh, at a shop called Envision, which is now owned by somebody else. But so a customer needed a pair of glasses made that day. Now we had a lab on the premises where we could make glasses. We could cut lenses that we had already ordered, but she needed those glasses ASAP. We didn't have her lenses in stock. So there's really nothing we could do, but we had her frame. But uh, one of my coworkers knew someone at a, a sort of a competing optical shop. She had a friend that was an optician over there. So I asked if she could call her friend over there, if they had the lenses in stock, if we could get them from them and then replace them when we get our order. Uh, and so she made a quick phone call. I ran over there in the snow, poorly dressed, grabbed those lenses. We brought them back and made the eyeglasses for the customer. She was actually on her, going to go on her honeymoon and really needed a pair of glasses because she had broken her. So blah, blah, blah. Um, so we went to a competitor, asked them for help. We did kind of have an inside you know, person to talk to, but we went to a competitor and asked for them to support us so that in the, in the future we could support them. And I'll tell you what happened is, <laughs> If I had a client who was not, um, say, in our market, because we were very, very high end, if they wanted something, but they really couldn't afford anything in my store, I could send that person over to that other competitor. And in turn, when they had someone who's looking for something, maybe a step above what they had, they could send them to me. So while we were competitors, we ended up supporting each other. And I think that was like a fantastic um, result to what could have been a horror story, right? So, I mean, how to, how to approach that kind of thing? Tell me about a time that you went outside of standard operating procedure. They're trying to see how, you know, how you are problem solving. Um, yeah. So you can look back at your own experience and, and, uh, and see how you stepped up and took care of a situation that, uh, wouldn't normally be handled in your regular, I don't know, I, did I approach that question anywhere near? I think I did, but let me just stop with that. Um, Jen asked, do I tip housekeepers, uh, the housekeeping staff in hotels when I can? If I have, well, it's, it's, that's a, a couple of things. When I can, meaning if I have money or if I have enough singles or lo, you know lower denomination, because I'm not gonna start throwing 10s and 20s at housekeeping. Um, if I have enough cash on me that doesn't need to go to the shuttle driver, because the shuttle drivers, 
yeah, uh, important because they're facing us and we have to deal with them all the time face to face. Uh, and um, I want to keep a few dollars left over to tip uh, my wait staff when I do um, grab something at a hotel, restaurant, or the even if a breakfast is free, for example, I still leave a couple of dollars under my table, my uh, plate for the server or for the bus people. So when I can, um, I will tip housekeeping, but my priority is to tip, because I may not have enough for everybody, I, my priority is the shuttle driver and our uh, wait staff at our hotel restaurants, especially when our breakfasts are very nice and free. I want to leave a little something under the, the um, under the plate. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, do we get do we get different pay for flying lead? In my airline, we get two dollars more an hour. That's it. Um, so right now, currently, at my uh, salary is thirty three point ninety four an hour. I think that's what I'm getting. Thirty three ninety four. Um, I would get two dollars more an hour. Does that sound like a lot of money? It's not. <laughs> I only I only work like seventy eight hours a month. Um, but, um, yeah, so I get $2 more an hour. So it goes from thirty three ninety four to thirty five ninety four. 94 So it definitely adds up over the course of a year. It, it adds up easily to, you know, $1,500, $1,800 a year. Um, next, do I get paid less if we arrive early? So, for example, if we fly into Las Vegas from say, you know, Detroit, and the flight's supposed to take three hours, but it only takes two hours and 15 minutes, I still get paid for the original credit. So if it was supposed to take three hours, I'll still get uh, paid for those three hours. If it takes less time, I'm still paid the original um, uh, credit hours. If it takes more time, for example, we flew from Boston to Las Vegas, it took, it was supposed to take like five and a half hours, you know, less than six hours, but because of headwinds, it took seven hours and nine minutes, bang. Um, so I got credit for those hours, but it all adds up cumulatively during the month. For example, on a trip, I might have worked three hours more than was scheduled, but over the course of the month, the pay period, I only, I worked two and a half hours less than I was supposed to. So I'm only gonna see that extra half hour's pay. It's not per trip or per day, it's per pay period. Did that make any sense? Um, and hey, I think that was it. I think that was it for um, questions for today. So I'm um, at Ikea walking around in circles, talking to my phone, so I'm gonna stop that. Uh, I'm gonna thank you for joining me on this very weird day and um, I will see you tomorrow, all right? Thanks for coming by and fly safe, bye. Yummy, does anyone else dip their french fries in mashed potatoes? It's like eating a twice baked potato, so good. So I guess I'll consider this bonus footage, I guess. Dinner was good, but I'm walking through the Ikea store. So I'll show you things I'm interested in just for kicks, if you if you want. Uh, but this is an ottoman, which is a very similar size as to one I, the one I got at Ikea. Um, Goodwill today. Uh, this one's $250. It does have storage. Mine does not, but $250 versus $15. Thank you. No. This is the sofa I thought I was going to buy when I first got my place. It's got like a chaise on this side and a sofa on this side. This slides underneath, so it's um, it pops up if you need someone to, somewhere for someone else to sleep. It used to be five change. Now it's like eight fifty, but um, now that I even look at it, it's too big for my place. So I'm really, really, really happy I found that chaise. I like my house, but I really wish I had a nice kitchen. I mean, I mean, I dream of having space within my kitchen. Oh, what are these? Oh, I love this. This planter. Oh, I like those. I'll see if I can find those. Those are very cool. Yeah, I dream of having a nice kitchen. Right now I have like a closet with 1987 tile all over the counters. But I don't cook a lot, so maybe it's okay.
This is one of my favorite things in the whole house, I promise. It's a cup holder for your desk and it just screws onto the edge of the table so that when Eleanor wants to sniff or taste whatever's in the cup, she doesn't knock it over. She knocks over things, but she's a cat. Do we need another cat? Buddy won't get jealous of this one. It's kind of deformed. Look at that cat pillow. <gasps> oh, I love that. All right, so the cat pillow is $15. I don't need it. I'm not going to buy it. There you go. I'm not sure if I've ever shown you where I actually keep my luggage when I'm in the house. Oftentimes it just hangs out in the garage, of course, but uh, when I'm in the house and I'm packing and repacking and organizing my bag, or I wanna, where I'm, blah, blah, when I wanna stow my bags, I bought this when I first got the house. It's a baby changing table. Yeah, I know. Uh, so my roller board fits up on top with plenty of space. The, bo the bottom shelves here, I have a extra roller board I've slid in there space for my rolling tote, all of my lunch bags, and um, I have a backpack or two I have stowed in the side. So all of my luggage and my backup luggage is organized all in one piece right here. And on the side, over here, on the uh, left-hand side of it, um, I have um, attached a picture ledge that you would usually hang you know, you'd hang it on the wall and you'd just lay pictures against the side of it. Um, and I have um, my device, my work device, charging on that little bit so I can just reach for it. And there's a little hook where I hang my um, my lanyard, my badge. So this becomes my work center. And it really has been a great, a great idea. I was very, very pleased with that. I've never seen anybody else use a baby changing table as a luggage center, but I thought it was a perfect idea. Um, and I think that's it. I think I've walked through the Ikea store. I'm gonna uh, peruse through the uh, warehouse bit downstairs and I'm gonna see if I can get out of here without buying anything. Although those um, plant planters, the hanging planters were very cool looking. So if they're cheap, I have a very nice place for those, if they're cheap. Here's a fun fact. I use, I use these under bed storage boxes. See how big these are? They're huge. I use three of these as litter boxes for my cats. I have three of those full of litter. <laughs> yeah, changing kitty litter is a challenge, but thankfully because of the area, uh, I don't have to do it that often. So yeah, um, I use three of those under bed storage boxes. Uh, so yeah, so the cats always have a fresh place to go. Neat, huh? Yeah, Ikea has, a great, has great solutions for very strange problems. I love this glass globe. I have a, a pendant light hanging in my living room. It's actually the clear version of it, but I love that smoked metallic. That is so cool. But I don't need it, right? They do have these planters in stock. I'm so excited because they never have what I want in stock. And they're only $13. So I just don't know how many I want. I, at least one, maybe two, maybe even three. I don't know. Um, oh, I forgot. I have to repot some spider plants. Cheap pots. Cheap pots. Very happy. No judgment. I actually like this Christmas tree by Ikea. It's a little open. It's a little sparse, but it's more dense than that one. Um, this one reminds me of a Christmas tree from my childhood in Germany. Did I ever tell you about the year we stole our Christmas tree? Man, yeah, maybe I'll save that for you for Vlogmas. Yeah, I'll save that story. <laughs> Be more likely to buy these paper honeycomb ornaments for my tree, just in case the tree falls over, like the cats don't get glass in their paws or anything if I'm away. Uh, but these, I don't know why they would color these ornaments like the color of dried blood. Is that like a Christmas thing? Like Jesus and everything? I, I don't know, but we're gonna, we're gonna stay away from the dried blood ornaments. I'll just show you these ornaments. So I, um, this, <laughs> this other customer and I were like, oh, those are, wait, it, it doesn't look like they're skiing. It looks like they're about to sit down on a toilet, doesn't it? And I was like, mm, yeah, well, and she said, you're not alone. This, the two of us were just giggling over these ornaments that looks like they're about to take a poop and they look like they really have to, too. They're, yeah. Second fun fact of the day, Ikea 
has raised most of their prices by at least 20%, but now you've got 5% off if you're a part of their IKEA family. Yay. <laughs> I ended up buying three of these um, plant holders, these hanging plant things. Uh, even if I only need one of them, I'd rather have more than I need. I can always return um, the other ones. A bromeliad, because apparently they are not toxic to cats and they're not spider plants. And I have like 15 spider plants. And of course, I have to have this. This is my favorite. Yummy. <laughs> but he's very curious about the shades and you can see his tail. Oh, and that he's already made himself at home. Now it is in a jumble of cat furniture by the front window, but I think it'd be a nice place to hang out with the cats hanging out up in the window, me over here with a book. I imagine Eleanor up there hanging her arms over the edge. So yeah, it's a little bit of a jumble, but there you go. Oh, and I hung my um, parrots up there as well, and I think that really looks good up there. Buddy, what do you think? What do you think? I think he's happy. I think that I'm going to have to fight you for that spot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it's dark in here. I just don't have many lights on. But Eleanor has joined me on the chaise lounge. It's a very nice time. The cats really love it. And it was $15. Yay! We're just hanging out on the chaise. And Eleanor is making use of this cat tree that she usually largely ignores. So that's nice. And look at her tail going. And Buddy, can you see Buddy? Look at Buddy. Cuddling against my legs on the shees. So happy. Oh my God, this is like the best $15 ever. Look at Eleanor. What are you doing, Eleanor? What are you doing? Where are you going? <laughs>